Hey guys, Cam here from PhoneDog.com and this is our review of the Two-Faced smartphone. With a screen on both sides, the Yota Phone 2 has to be one of the most unique smartphones that we've seen this year. Unlike most other manufacturers, instead of adding loads of numbers to a spec sheet, it added a feature that you're probably not going to see anywhere else. But is this feature any good? We're going to find out in our review. The Yotaphone is more than just a device with an unusual feature. It's also one of the most ergonomic phones I've used. This is mostly thanks to the nicely curved back, which has a really nice soft matte finish. But perhaps more important is the size of the phone. It's only 69.4 millimeters wide. That's three millimeters narrower than a Moto X. And despite being two millimeters wider than an iPhone 6, it still manages to feel small in hand thanks to those aforementioned curves. Despite being made of plastic, the phone does feel fairly solidly made. That's not to say it feels like a premium handset. It doesn't. But I really like its understated finish and lack of lavish extravagances. I particularly like the rounded edges on the top and the bottom, which give it a more pebble-shaped look rather than the usual rectangle with rounded corners. I also really like the effort made to hide everything. All the ports and hardware are subtly designed so as not to show off in any way. The earpiece on the front is a small cutout groove in the glass. The camera and LED on the back are just two basic circles. The grey plastic frame is barely interrupted by the headset jack, micro USB or power or volume button, which incidentally doubles as the SIM tray. If there's one weakness, it's a pet peeve of mine. Poor buttons. I like to feel a solid click, a well-made switch when I'm pressing a button. The Otophone doesn't have that. There's so little travel and so little tactile feedback that I sometimes had to press the power and volume buttons twice, just to be sure that it registered. With most phones, there's only one display to consider. With the Otophone 2, there are two. The main display is a 5-inch Full HD AMOLED panel, which really pops and is surprisingly good. It might not be the brightest display on the market, but I love the way the content seems to float on the surface. Colours are vivid, and although the overall tone is a little warm, the whites don't change colour depending on viewing angle. This makes browsing the web as pleasing an experience as watching a movie or gaming. As for the secondary display, that's a different story altogether. For reading ebooks, there can surely be no better experience than an e-paper display. Although the 4.7 inch panel is plenty big enough, at 2 3, 5 ppi, it's not the sharpest screen around. And the refresh rate is so slow that it's not the best for any apps or content that's animated. It can also be a challenge to know if your gesture has been recognized by the touch sensors since feedback isn't immediate, but the screen can be super useful. The Otohub lets you customize what appears on your secondary screen. That can be widgets for displaying weather, calendar, or a clock, or you can have shortcuts to your favorite contacts or apps that you can activate without using the main display, conserving battery juice. If you want to, you can use 16 shades of gray to show off a grayscale wallpaper. But the best thing about it is that if the content isn't changing or moving, it doesn't use any power at all. This makes it incredibly economical, and it's much easier to see in daylight than every color screen around. It's also really useful if you want to take selfies using the main camera. Yotaphone's 8 megapixel camera is a pretty simple setup. It has autofocus and flash and can record in 1080p video. All in all, it's an average experience. Colors and detail are underwhelming and noise creeps in when light levels drop. Macro shots definitely aren't its forte. Focusing on close-up objects proves a struggle most of the time. That said, I've used worse cameras than the one in Yotaphone's latest creation. It's when you consider this phone's higher-end price point that you'd start wondering whether something like a Galaxy S5, iPhone 6, or an Xperia Z3 might be a better option. In the performance and battery category, it's pretty decent. Yotaphone 2 plays host to a quad-core 2.2GHz Snapdragon processor and runs on stock Android with a couple of added Yotaphone apps and settings. Performance, therefore, is smooth and reliable. Switching between apps is easy and fast, loading games is as easy as it would be on most modern flagships. Although it handles most tasks with ease, nothing about the performance really wowed me. Not once did I sit back impressed at its speed. It won't let you down, but it won't excite you either. At least not until we start talking battery life. Thanks to some built-in battery saving options and the ability to just use the low energy e-paper display on the back, if you want to, you can get days out of a single charge. 
Perhaps even up to a week if you use the e-paper display exclusively. Use it like a regular smartphone, however, and you'll get about the same use as most other smartphones. 2,500 milliamp hour battery should get you through a day on a full charge, but even if it doesn't, you can fall back on the quick charge technology to give your phone a boost during the day. As an overall package, excluding the secondary screen, the Yota Phone 2 is a good smartphone. In fact, I'd have no issues using it as my daily driver. But if you're an avid ebook reader and you don't want to have to carry your Kindle with you everywhere, then the e-paper display on the Yota Phone 2 could be the best thing that ever happened to a smartphone. With a retail cost of 555 UK pounds or around $850, it's at the high end of the market. And I find it hard to recommend over some similarly priced or even lower priced smartphones unless you happen to be one of those aforementioned e-paper fanatics who likes to read books on the go. I've been Cam from PhoneDog, I'm at PhoneDog underscore Cam on Twitter and you can leave any suggestions, thoughts or comments on there or use the comments section down below and I will see you again soon.